Are you also seeing all those videos about Flight Simulator 2024 performance and saw the word rebar popping up? I also did and I wondered what is it? In this video we're going to look at what it is and also how it can impact the performance of Flight Simulator. But first let's roll the intro. As already mentioned in this video, we're going to look at what rebar is and also the effect of enabling and disabling rebar by, uh, say, putting two screens next to each other and then flying a short flight. But first look at what rebar actually is. So let's break it down simply. Think of your CPU and GPU as two separate processors in your computer. The GPU has its own super fast memory called the VRAM, right, which is the memory of the graphic card where it stores all the textures, models, and the graphical data it needs to render the game world, as also for Flight Simulator 2024. Traditionally, in traditional method, when your CPU needed to access the data from the GPU's VRAM, it could only do this in small chunks, right? Chunks of 256 megabyte, those were the chunks which it could access. This, of course, could create bottlenecks, slowing down things. This method can be compared by loading an aircraft and then putting, I would say, a luggage item uh, one by one in the uh, cargo room, which, of course, results in a lot of time required to load the aircraft. Especially in games that needed to constantly feed the GPU with new data, this could cause some bottlenecks. And hey, and that's what Flight Simulator 2024 is, right? It needs to have continuously new data because of the change in the sceneries. Now, if we look at the rebar functionality, which stands for the resizable bar, it's a feature that essentially opens up the window completely, which means that we don't need to load the data in chunks. No, it can completely access the entire VRAM buffer of your graphics card directly. It's like loading an aircraft a cargo room in one single shot, which is, I would say, pretty amazing. Now, why is this a big deal? especially for gaming. Well, with full access to the VRAM, the CPU can transfer data to the GPU much more efficiently. This can lead to several benefits you might actually see and feel in games, like increased uh, frame rates, reduced stuttering, but also improved frame pacing. All of them result in a better responsive feeling when playing the game. In theory, with rebar enabled, your CPU could more efficiently manage and feed that massive amount of graphical data to your GPU. This could, and again, could potentially help with those moments where the sim might stutter or when it loads new scenery. And in some cases, it might even optimize how VRAM is used by allowing more fluid data exchange. Now here's the crucial part. While the theory behind rebar is promising for VRAM hungry applications, the real world impact, especially in Flight Simulator 2024, isn't always a guaranteed magic bullet. That's purely based on the information I found on the internet on several internet fora. But how does it really look like? Let's test it out. So on the left side we've got the resizable bar setting using DLSS and the right side we've got the non-resizable bar also using DLSS. Right, so both are using the same settings, also the same flight because I recorded using the flight recorder and then simply kind of replicated or replayed the same uh, flight every time uh, while changing the settings. Uh, so first off, all right, since the video is still on still, uh, you can see that there's already a, say, a difference in the frame rate where the uh, resizable one is a little bit higher compared to the uh, non-resizable bar. But also if you keep an eye on the memory, which I will mark in a few seconds, then you will see that the uh, resizable bar, the memory usage much higher. So let me start the video and then uh, have a look, right? So here we go. Uh, so uh, the red one, the red box on both screens, right, shows the uh, GPU memory usage. And you can see that the GPU memory usage on the left side is much higher, right? It's 12.36 gigabyte vs 10.4-ish around the non-resizable bar side. 
Currently, you can see that the frame rates are, I would say, kind of in sync. But what you will see is that they will start to differentiate more and more. Uh, it's not a huge difference, right? We're talking about uh, three up to a maximum of uh, five or six frames per second. Uh, but it could be a difference. Uh, so that's why you also will see that at one point resizable bar video will be much further progress compared to the uh, say a right one that's due to the frames per second if we now keep an eye on the uh, memory usage you can see that the memory decreases a little bit right because we're increasing altitude so it needs to load less details but still the resizable bar one contains or is using much more memory compared to the non-resizable bar Right, that's really something which you need to be aware of. So let me skip the video a little bit ahead further so you can see what happens uh, besides this. So we skipped a little bit ahead and we're close to Canary Wharf, right, the financial district of London. And that's where you will start to see more differences. First of all, if you look at the frozen screen, you can see that the memory usage is still, there's a huge difference, right? You can't, would say, miss it. But besides that, look at the frames per second if we start this video now, right? We're currently at 71 on the resizable bar vs the uh, non-resizable bar, which is at 46. Uh, also, the other, I would say, markers are sometimes, I would say, shown in, in red and in yellow, which also indicates something is happening. So let me start the video and then we can have a closer look at what happens else. And look at the bumps in the no resizable bar, right? It's almost frozen at some points uh, where you will start to see that the left side, the resizable bar continues to say kind of be fluent. So currently we're at 75 VS, almost half of the frames per second uh, on the uh, right side, right? Which is the no resizable uh, window. Also, if you look at the memory usages, I would say they're pretty close to each other. There's one gigabyte difference. And once we pause can reward, you can see that it will start to say coming close together because this is where I would say it likely doesn't require too much GPU power. And that results in this. However, if we're coming closer to London City, is what you currently see, you can see that the no resizable uh, bar has a much bigger impact on frames per second vs the resizable bar, which is still at 75, right? Which is still pretty good. However, memory usage, almost one gigabyte more. The other thing which I observed is that once ATC kicks in, those I would say main threads will be massively affected. That's all those red lines. Uh, so also you might be impacted by this, uh, but that's would say something which I do think we can't do much about. Now let's do the same thing, only then switching from DLSS to TAA and see what happens then. So if we compare the two screens in this still image, we can see that the memory usage both for the resizable as well as for the no resizable bar is much higher compared to when using DLSS. The other observation which we can see is that the render rate is higher. That's likely caused by the different, I would say, method being used, right? Because we're now using TAA instead of uh, DLSS. And we can see that the resizable bar frame per second is a little bit higher compared to the no resizable bar. But now let's start the video and then let's look at the impact while we're flying. So let's start flying now. So you can see that currently would say the numbers are starting to count, right? Which means that we're in a live video. So it's 13.8-ish in the resizable uh, bar vs 12.1, 12.2 in the no resizable bar. If we're looking at the frame rates, we can see that they're pretty close to each other, right? So not a huge difference. Uh, so let's see what happens if we're going airborne and if we're, and if we're looking at some other pieces. You can see that the video is a little bit out of sync, so we need to keep an eye on that. Uh, so we're airborne with both aircraft, which is good. And you can see that it's still around 13.4-ish in the uh, resizable one, where you could see a small drop in the frames per second. And if we're now looking at the uh, non-resizable bar, it's at 12.6-ish. Uh, so, or 11.6-ish, sorry. 11.8.8. Uh, so it would say it's pretty stable i would say but you can see that the uh, differences are i would say sometimes huge right you can see it jumps up to almost a uh, two gigabyte difference 13.8 vs 11.6 which is a lot and if we look at the number of uh, frames per second it's still pretty close to each other right i would say there's almost no difference i would say 
Uh, of course, you will be able to measure it if you would like to, but not a lot of difference. So let's now do the same thing as the previous uh, part and let's jump to Canary Wharf. So we're at Canary Wharf and the screen is frozen. So I compared the TAA versions vs the DLSS versions. So if we look from frames per second perspective, I would say resizable is approximately the same, whereas the no resizable bar performs a little bit better in the uh, TAA mode of 54 vs 46 ish in the DLSS mode. If we look at the memory consumption from both configurations, we can see that both the resizable vs the no resizable are consuming a lot more of GPU memory. So that's really important to keep in mind. But let's see how that is during flight. Will it become better? Or not. So we're flying and we can see the numbers jumping up and around. We're seeing memory usage which is increasing due to the additional uh, details which need to be loaded up to 14 gigabyte of memory for the resizable one whereas 11.5 for the no resizable one. If you look at the frames per second it goes well but in a few seconds you will see that the TAA version also for the resizable one is starting to drop down massively to 30 frames per second. You can see that there's a correlation between those red markers because if you see those red markers you will see it has an impact on flight simulator 2024 if we now compare the frames per second for the no resizable uh, bar that's much higher right although the resizable bar now also corrected itself uh, so let's see what happens if we're going i would say a little bit lower you will see that the memory will increase and also the the bumping in the uh i would say no resizable version is becoming a little bit worse uh, again here I do think that the main thread is massively impacting this so that's something which SOBO really needs to look at. If we're looking at the memory consumption we're coming close to the 12 gigabyte mark on the uh, no resizable one where the resizable one is at 12.7 almost 14 so a lot of memory being consumed but also the frames per second is heavily impacted when using TAA. To use rebar there are certain system requirements. One of them is the CPU. It needs to be an Intel Core i3, i5, i7 or i9 and then the 10th generation or newer. Or if you are having an AMD CPU then you will need to have a Ryzen 3000 series or a newer one. Besides the CPU your BIOS also needs to support rebar, right? Check in the BIOS settings to see if there's a resizable bar option or in some cases it's called the above 4G decoding option. Make sure that those are enabled. And this last part of course the GPU. That needs to be an AMD Radeon RX 6000 series or newer or an Nvidia RTX 30 series or newer or an Intel ARC. For the Intel ARC make sure to check the Intel website which ones are supporting rebar. To check if rebar is enabled you can simply open the NVIDIA control panel and then make sure that the resizable bar is set to yes. The second one is using GPU Z and making sure that the resizable bar is set to enabled. This is a third party tool and you will find the download link in the description of this video. So while we can't say definitely yet how much rebar will impact Flight Simulator 2024's VRAM users and performance is a technology which clear potential from improving CPU GPU communication in demanding titles. If you have compatible hardware it's definitely worth making sure it's enabled which in most cases likely will be. However there's a caveat as you've seen in a test in this video is that in some cases the resizable bar results in a much higher memory usage which in some cases could cause some issues because you're hitting the VRAM limitations of your GPU. With this we're at the end of the video where we looked at what rebar is and how it could impact Flight Simulator 2024. I hope you liked it, if you liked it make sure to hit the like button and of course don't forget to look at the description of the video because there are links to those tools which, you, which will help you identifying if rebar is enabled. Thanks for watching and hope to see you back next time.